Yo, yo, yo. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Hey. Hey, guys. <laughs> Lovely to see you. So Lovely sorry I missed so sorry I missed last week. I'm oh, I'm gutted, oh. gutted about that. Well, we but, missed you very much. We missed not as much, much as we missed you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> on our wonky on our wonky two-wheel tricycle. No way. It's not happening. It's not happening again. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, I didn't give you very much notice. No, um, it was I'm sure it would have been absolutely fine if, yeah. if I had. <laughs> Hey, hey, listen, I uh, just wanted to say something that I should have said last week, uh, uh, but um, I, I'm going to have a no uh, trolls kind of rule uh, full stop uh, in the comments. So if anyone starts insulting anyone on the show, mm -hmm. anything like that, I'm going to at least put them into a timeout. So um, I just wanted to make that clear before we headed off. No offense to anyone doing it. It's just if, if anyone has personal beefs or anything like that, <laughs> do it off. Do it. Do it some someplace else. Yeah. Don't, um, don't do it here while we're trying to do a show. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, not, appropriate, yes. not professional. Good yeah. idea. Good <laughs> idea. Actually. What a great week! It was absolutely <laughs> brilliant. I I went to London and I met the uh, the dinosaurs hoarding their rights. Uh, <laughs> Posey Parker's um, uh, uh, or uh, uh, protest. Oh, honestly. Like, that woman is a marketing fucking <laughs> genius. She, that, that, that was outstanding. I, I mean, I have to say hats off. What an outstanding pro cheerful dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> Just great. excellent. And I was walking, I, I was walking behind them for, for like a good long period of time and just seeing this dinosaur just try to waddle down the street like three <laughs> of them it was just brilliant it was lovely so and, <laughs> and what and we had a lot of them it was interesting first of all we were outside the lancet uh is it all right if i leap into this i haven't really asked you guys how you yeah doing, yeah go go, yeah. go for it I'm i'll just give you a yeah. quickly a quick thing first of all we were outside the lancet and um we were getting beat we we're getting a lot of a lot of beeps um uh we noticed a lot of vans would beep us a lot of kind of um, uh, you know working working men and women would beep us, um, but the other thing that I noticed is that at least three ambulances went by and they all beeped for us. Oh so, wow! Yeah, so we're outside. We're outside the Lancet, and we have oh, NHS that is workers. interesting. We have an NHS workers going bam 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 <laughs> all the way through. It was brilliant. <laughs> uh, then we went up to Labour Party headquarters and. Um, it was brilliant. They, had, they not only did they have the dinosaurs, they had all these eggs with things like um, <laughs> excellent with things like safety in prison and <clears throat> you know all this sort of stuff, and they were hoarding those rights <laughs> as, <laughs> as they had every right to do. You know, so it was a it was a wonderful day. I didn't get to speak to Posey because there were so many people there; it was just crazy. But uh, but you know, I I really. But the more I, the more I see of Posey, and the more I, I kind of um, hear her speak and stuff like that, um, you know, the more I think, you know, it, it's just a real shame that I think people allowed what happened to me to happen to her as well, which is that once society at large decides you're toxic, even people on your side join in, and uh, I think Posey is uh, a strategic genius. Um, uh, she's surrounded by people who are funny and brave and bright, and it was just an absolute pleasure to 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 support it was them. You know, obviously, such a smart idea. I mean, such a clever idea, wasn't it? Because it's so visual. Yeah. It's so visual. Like the NHS, you know, the ambulance workers, they knew, they understood exactly what was going on there, didn't they? They it was outside the Lancet. They they knew what was going on because it was simply there. It's just a visual thing. It is. It was a stroke of absolute genius i thought it was fantastic very well, that, very very clever it was funny kind of, too so funny that i mean it just yes, how so can you funny. not side with uh with the, the people who are taking the piss in such a fun way you know yeah we we have dinosaurs they have death threats you know <laughs> yes exactly. how many days now has, has has kathleen stock been subjected to death threats you yeah. know there was a story in the things. sunday times today that she she's got uh the police on speed dial so when she calls 999 the police just come to her house Wow! Yeah, it's uh, you know it's uh, mind blowing, and 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 still we're being the ones who are being cast as as the wrong side of history for opposing this stuff. How dare they, Billy Bragg? Billy Bragg, like like, I mean, I, I just I still can't get over Billy Bragg. What? How can you at 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 such an advanced age so decide that women are the problem here? 
He is deliberately well, ignoring these things. These do you know, I've been thinking, thinking and thinking about this this weekend. And, and genuinely, I think one of the major problems that we've got is, is that you've got the two sides are, are just so completely unequal. You've got just normal women. You know, it started with normal sort of your average women, a high proportion of lesbians seeing, beginning to see a problem. Women joining in, like raising the alarm. Latterly, a lot of gay men and some male allies, which are just normal, reasonable people. And then you've got on the other side, it isn't a defined group, is it? It's a group that anyone can opt into if they like. And it's made up of a very sort of disparate people, but a lot of it um, is narcissism, people with mental health issues. Like you've okay. got a, a very, very sort of a, a, like a lot of toxic people. And so you've got a very, very, very unequal um, sort of playing field. And outsiders like the press, etc., politicians, they're looking at it and they're thinking, oh, well, let's just try and find a compromise between these two groups. <laughs> but we're not finding a middle yeah. ground at this level. We're this, yeah. this, this, it's sort of this level. And this is where this idea of right side of history comes from, isn't it? It's the narcissism. It's it's they're already declaring that they've won because because they're like they're like the, the, the sort of children who have been brought up the, that one child in the family who just has tantrums all the time. And in the end, like the parents, the other siblings, they just give in. And yeah. the level of what that child, what's acceptable from that child is completely different to what's yeah. acceptable to these children. <clears throat> Not talking yeah. about my own I children saw... here at all. <laughs> 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 I saw. Sorry, sorry, Artie. Uh, you haven't had a turn yet. What do uh, I don't want to leap into my next thing? Oh well, I mean, just to to Helen, I think that's such a good point about uh, all of the problems on the other side with people who are identifying into this nonsense. But then you've got all the allies and supporters who I think have a different uh, array of strange, unusual problems and misunderstandings. <laughs> yes, I think there's this really sense is people really need a new thing. You know, it's just not. We've talked about this before, all three of us. Yeah, the we just need a new thing. cause. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that just really, really, you just see all these middle class white people who just really, really need, you know, to have a cause to latch onto that that represents the current era that hasn't been sort of already claimed by someone else. So you see people just desperately <laughs> clinging to this issue. <laughs> yeah, but but, but yeah, no, it's very true. But what's yeah. crazy about it is they don't cling to the obvious. Like it's obviously clear that the good guy in this fight is Kathleen Stock, yeah. who's, a, who's a lesbian, who's yeah. getting death threats. It is could not be clearer that that is who you should yes. be supporting. Yeah, and there's yet, a cause that's readily available for you if you want one, and it's yeah. called gender critical. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like, like yes. so, no, absolutely. women's rights and children's rights and gays and lesbians' rights is back on the table again. Why don't you get on that fight? You know? Yeah, and people like Billy Bragg are deliberately ignoring what's happening to women like her. In fact, I tweeted another, and there's another guy, Alex Andro, who is this guy who tweets about every political thing under the sun except this issue. And the only time he did uh, tweet about this issue was to condemn stickers that said things like, you know, women don't have penises. They or or women will don't. not submit. Or women, or will, women not will not submit. submit. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, now, I mean, genuinely, I've been answering, <laughs> I've been answering like a thread on this one yesterday uh, yeah. where where I, I was saying, with, uh, do you think that women should submit? I mean, genuinely, how can you, how can you be against these stickers? Are yeah. you seriously suggesting that women should submit? But of course, there was, I mean, there were people, there was somebody who said these women would be, would be best off just, um, that these obstinate women should just get over it and, and just accept that this is happening. Yeah. Uh, and you're like, and this is what made me think, the uh, about this fight it, it's simply this you've you've got this group of people who just want women to obey mm. and submit because mm. because it's narcissistic it's very misogynistic um and 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 they simply it simply can't accept that women are saying no yeah 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 it is the most i've never seen anything rapier than this movement you know, like the 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 bloke who criticised Dave Chappelle. We must talk about Dave Chappelle at some point. Um, <laughs> but the bloke who criticised Dave Chappelle has a tattoo in his arm 
of a woman with a cock ejaculating. <clears throat> and this it's is the who, most disgusting thing. I saw it this morning. I was like, uh, yeah. this is the and, case. And it's, it's, basically, it's basically just rubbing women's face in it. There's yes. nothing you can do about me and my fucking gross, porny habits getting into your into your spaces and this blo and the funniest thing about this bloke because dave Chappelle was talking about it, it's such a great thing that happened let's let's segue into dave um but dave great. was great because dave said the thing that as many have pointed out we've been saying for years which is that these white men have suddenly leaped to the top of the oppression index by saying that they're women and a couple of days after the piece appeared variety interviewed of all trans women to interview the bloke with the cock tattoo, right? <laughs> That's that should be the, the title of my detective novel, the bloke with the <laughs> cock tattoo. And 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 variety cluelessly <laughs> variety cluelessly interviews that guy. Do you know what that guy works on? A show he's the showrunner on a show yes. called Dear White Dear People. Dear White People. Yep, oh. I saw that. He's a white man. He's a straight white man. He's at the absolute fucking top of the pyramid. And, and hasn't he, he transitioned now to uh, to identify as a woman? Isn't that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. With the with, In fact, he with was the one cock. Of, he was one of yeah. the early um, early guys we pointed out as doing the head tilt. You know, the suddenly I'm I'm a man. You're always you're always scowling when you're a man, <laughs> but then when they're a woman, that's it. That's all that that's that's the he did. There's there's two photographs of him, one with a full beard and two days later in a floral dress tilting his head. You know, it's fucking extraordinary. So so the fact that Variety were so clueless as to interview that guy in particular, uh, it was it was just perfect, you know. And then the next day, uh, uh, Chappelle got a standing ovation from a bunch of celebs. And he said, and it really made me laugh that he said this. He said, if this is what being cancelled is like, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, so it's it's just brilliant. He's he's just the latest person to make people a little bit braver to stand up and say, hang on a second, this is uh something's not right here, you know. Yeah. Can I can I say the name? If somebody was asking, it's it's Jacqueline Moore, blue a blue tick person, 25,000 followers. So I think it's okay to say. Yeah. Um, th this is writer showrunner on dear right dear, dear white, white people. people. And, I mean, yeah. It's, I mean, can you imagine if I ran a show called Dear White People? Can you imagine the outrage? But but if I but if I put on my hair disguise and wore pu purple lipstick and and put my hair in pigtails, a bit short at the moment, but I'm working on it. Then I would be I would be absolutely fine. It would be fine, you know. Well, not me actually, because everyone knows I'm taking the piss. But it's um, it's just been absolutely outrageous, you know. Uh, oh, let, sorry, I just got a message through. Let me just check it something. Uh, okay, I will sort that out. Um, right. Uh, I'm sorry I had to do that, but I have to do that because I don't like people pestering my guests when I'm on. Um, the sh when we're doing the show, so uh, sorry uh, about that. Yeah, we made it very clear. You don't pester the host during the live show. <laughs> yeah, or you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. uh, so um, guess what? Uh, sorry, this is uh, I'm running. I've got a few things to talk about, but guess what? I I I was posting the piece about that Jacqueline character today uh, on my blog, and so I went to look for photographs of Dave Chappelle to illustrate it because there was one being used. I didn't want to use the same one again, so I used. I tried to find a different one, and I saw tickets for um, for him in London the day before the LGB Alliance show. And guess who got one? Did you get one? Me? Yes, that's the <laughs> yes. answer. It's supposed to be a bit quicker than that. Yeah. So, so I can't believe it. I'm just absolutely over the moon. Um, uh, you know. Are you gonna uh, try? Are you gonna try and get backstage? <laughs> No, 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 no. You know, like, what would I fucking hell? I'd be too tongue tied. I never like meeting um, people I admire. I find it too. I, I, I just don't know what to say to them. And you know, what do you say to them? It, you know, one of the things that people point out is that when you write a book or, or do a comedy routine or 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 put some stuff together, that really is you at your best. <laughs> it doesn't get better than that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You've you've composed your arguments. You've sorted them out into a nice nice list. You do, you just it's 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 you at your best. Oh so, yes. So why would you go backstage when he's tired? When he's just done himself at his best for an hour, 
and he's just trying to figure out things to say. No, 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 no. I'd rather, I'd rather. No, I, think, that, I think that's fair. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, so it was an interesting, and, and, and a couple of other interesting phenomena about the, um, about the protest the other day. Um, we had lots of engagement from, from men. You know, they were interested, they were listening, uh, they were nodding, all this sort of stuff. Uh, I didn't see them crumple up the paper and throw it away when they walked away. I was, I was, <laughs> I was looking out for that. Um, yeah. But, uh, but lots of lots of women, especially and most most uh, sadly, young girls who were just kind of arguing against their own rights, and it was yeah. really really sad. So. That's what I witnessed too when I was out on the streets. It's women. It's a lot of young women and young girls. Uh, yeah. who, but we know uh, why we've 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 you know we've just we've discussed why like i mean i i can i can honestly put my hand up and say that i would have been one of these girls i i can <laughs> i imagine i mean i work i work in computing in the finance industry so when i was young you know in my early 20s when i started work i was pretty much always the only woman um and then you'd get the sort of mds coming over from new york and people would go to a strip club and I'd always go along because yes. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm cool, I'm cool, because this is what you did. You know, you, you wanted to be part of the team. I mean, you certainly didn't want to be left out yeah. um, because that's, what you know, decisions are made, people get to know each other, there's networking, and you just go along and you're like, yeah, you know, it's it's all cool. I'm I'm one of the guys. I'm not I'm not one of these sort of prudish sort of pearl clutching women. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, 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 I'm afraid that, you know, there's there is a huge amount of that going on. Young women understand in this culture, I mean, I, I know we know, but I, I do think it's worth um, repeating that young women are aware in this culture that um, a lot depends on their people wanting to, people liking them. Um, mm. If people don't like you when, you know, if, 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 if you appear to be one of these women that people don't like, mm -hmm. you know, what are you? So yeah. it's 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 very much I, mm -hmm. I want to be, you know, I want to be on the side of the right. They've been told that this is the side, this is the righteous side to be on. Yeah. So yeah. you know you're obviously going to do it. Um mm -hmm. as you become older, you start, you know, you see it, you start to question it, especially say if you've had children, you you realize, you know, you you see it all, you know, it opens your eyes. Yeah. Um However, you know, I was I was thinking about this. Sorry, I'm just gonna segue into something else which is slightly related. I, I, I was seeing people sort of talking about how people are always saying, oh, this is the sort of peak moment. This is, you know, it's going to change. We're going to win. And I don't think, I don't think there is such a thing as sort of going to be a, 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 an overall win. I think there's going to be little gains here and there. And one of the big gains, and I think one of the big gains that has been made, and this is where the sort of the, the genius of the dinosaurs comes into it, is simply raising awareness and mm -hmm. awareness has really been raised now like we said before you know it, it primetime television is now asking the leaders of the parties you know, <laughs> is, you know is a, a person with a cervix a woman yeah. um and 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 so this is this is a massive gain you know this in itself is a win i think because people are listening people are understanding that there's a problem now and people are prepared to sort of look into it whereas maybe sort of five years ago people would be like oh this is just fringe i'm not mm -hmm. interested yeah. in this but people are now i think and that's a huge win well, and it's the know. media finally picking up remember for the longest time people on the streets were really saying okay i see the problems here but the media was not touching this. Like in Canada, the media still won't touch this. But now you've got the BBC putting together a special, apparently, to talk about this issue in some kind of debate-like format. Oh, got, like finally. Said, That's great. Yeah. Great. So, like, the media, you're so right, Helen. And the fact that the media is finally saying it's okay to talk about this, that it's not taboo, you know, that it must be spoken about, <laughs> that there are enough working-class people and people who aren't. Uh, Oxbridge educated media people <laughs> yelling at the Oxbridge educated media people to start paying attention to this that they start they realize they have to now you know yeah like like I I I think that finally these kind of people who just I mean really for the last four or five years women have just been invisible to them completely invisible this issue has not even come near their radar but suddenly they're realizing that the positions that are being put forward by very serious politicians are insane 
you know, what's wrong with saying women have a cervix? That's a fucking great question. You know, it should have been asked four yeah. years ago. Should have been asked four years ago, but yes. it's only been, it's only being asked now, which is fine as long as they keep asking it. They can't just drop it. They can't just say, "Well, we spoke about that." So, no, this has resulted in death threats to a lesbian academic. You know, this has resulted in people losing their livelihoods and jobs. You mm -hmm. know, not just yeah. famous people, not just people who have like like Kathleen, who 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 have um, you know an OBE and stuff like that, but pe ordinary people who are being silenced and cancelled without anyone ever knowing about it. You know, yes, like R Rachel Mead, you know, who 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 is the social worker who was taken down by uh, uh, someone will remind me of the name of the group. I always forget. It's something like Social Work UK or something like that. You know, I mean, they 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 um, they reprimanded her. I think took her out of her job. And the reason they gave was because she was sharing my website. And then I wrote to them and I yeah. said, what's wrong with my website? What are you, what are you saying? Like, and they, <laughs> they wrote back and they said, oh, sorry, that was in there by mistake. So I took something out that was, that was used to condemn this woman and she's still condemned. So, you know, yeah. you know, it's, it's people like that. And these are the invisible people who are, who are being, you know, having the shit kicked out of them in a, in a back alley. Without people, without the press, and 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 and, but you and know, high profile feminists are paying no attention. It's it's disgraceful. But but you but you know you've got um but but this has been happening to Kathleen for a really long time. You mm. know, for years she's being vilified on campus. She's she's been having people trying to get rid of her, but now finally it's in the news, and Sussex Uni has had to put out a statement mm -hmm. um, saying, no, no, we're we're all for freedom of speech, um, obviously, because you're a university. So it would be terrible if they hadn't. But they have. Finally, they've put out a statement. So it is getting out there. You know, this is in the news. My husband said, oh, look, you know, yesterday he said, here's a story about Kathleen Stop. I'm assuming mm. you know about this. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, speaking of husbands, that's something that uh, that I feel that um, I said, I put, put this on my substack yesterday, but I just wanted to, to say it again. You know, a lot of the women who come to the protest, come to these protests, they're unaccompanied by men. There's no men with them. There's no like, um, uh, um, there's no like uh, boyfriends or husbands or sons turning up with them. Now, if even one, if even one man per woman turned up, we would we would double the size of size of these crowds, and you'd be able to support women without getting into too much trouble, without you know doing something fun, meeting lots of interesting people, you know. I really, I really think more men should be coming to these, um, to these protests. Mm. You know, it makes mm. me sad sometimes when I see, you know, like some people traveling on their own on trains for for hours. But it's, po you know, it's possible that the that the husbands there looking after the kids, whatever, or the women just want to go out and get massively pissed. With don't get me wrong. I mean... don't, don't get me, but then again, <laughs> husbands is only one one part of the male empire. There are also <laughs> brothers, sons, uncles, <laughs> you know. These people should be turning yeah. up, and I'm sure there must be there must be at least one person who could come and and you know, show the numbers and, and talk to people who might not otherwise be spoken to. We, the brilliant thing about these protests as well is that we were turfing, we were we were peak trans and people all over the place, you know. Like we Excellent. had young, Excellent. young good young young guys would see me and they'd say he wrote father ted blah 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 and then they 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 come over to me and talk to me about it and i'd hand them a leaflet and stuff like this it was great you know so you know we just need more we just need a little bit more involvement by men always ask you know sometimes it's a woman only protest ask if it's okay to come along but do ask you know because because we need more numbers we need more people fighting against this stuff um anyway sorry uh what else happened this week <laughs> Um, well, I saw. I saw that. Uh, I know. I know. We've we've mentioned her so many times, but it, it is the sort of almost the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, Laurie Penny yesterday <laughs> yesterday read yeah, Stock's right. book, and honestly, fair play for reading the book. Uh, a lot of people who criticise Stock or Helen Joyce have not read the book, so you know, hands up, fair play to her for reading the book. And she said, actually, this book is reasonable. There's a lot of reasonable stuff in this book, and then she got so much pushback push back on her um, thread with people sort of saying, oh no, this she signed this declaration or she's a trustee of the LGB Alliance, which is a massive hate, hate group, etc." cetera. Um, she recounted and she said, oh, sorry, I wasn't really aware of this. And honestly, I'm a bit upset by everyone having a go at me. 
Oh, yeah. You know, as somebody pointed out, she's managed to make it about her, yeah, herself yeah, 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 yeah. again. Yeah. But but the lack of integrity was astonishing. I, I thought, wow, fair play. She's actually read it and she said, this is a reasonable book because it is. It yeah. is a reasonable book. It's a well-written, reasonable book. But she recanted. I've deleted my tweet because oh, I wasn't aware of all these things. <laughs> but, the, but the interesting thing is, is that the there is... There is no recounting to something like that. People were still on the other side saying, well, you should have educated yourself first. You should have looked first. Oh, my God, you said it was reasonable. And honestly, it's so unhelpful to that side. I, I was really hoping that this would maybe wake her up to the fact that it's all on, you know, it is all or nothing. Absolutely yeah. all or nothing. You have to go all in on that side. You yeah, have that's, to. Um, that's what people don't realise. slightly short of full-on trans women or women will get you vilified oh, because yeah. anything slightly short of full-on trans women or women is pretty much most people's side isn't it because uh, yes yeah. trans women are trans women and yeah. they should be free to live a, a, a decent life they present themselves however they want um just you know small number of spaces where you, you just got to have like female only spaces so anything slightly short of that is the reasonable position again we're going back to this complete skew aren't we in the yeah. uh, in in the fight well that's why like what one of the reasons what people used to tell me to stop talking about it and and what they they didn't understand about this movement is that it it does not under you do it does not matter how much or how little you say about this it doesn't matter if you apologize through your fucking your nose uh, like when you're asleep you know it does not matter <laughs> You know, they will come for you anyway. And the best example I can give of this, and I mean this with a lot of affection because I'm not signing them off, but, but Robert Webb wrote one tweet about this and then deleted it about five seconds later. And he's still being hounded by these lunatics. You know, yeah. I have have 24 hours a day <laughs> been fucking <laughs> railing about this stuff, been, been, <laughs> been exposing uh, the uh, predators and fetishists and misogynists who are... Um, who are uh, um, uh, attaching themselves to this, and yet I am on the same level as Robert Webb, you know. So as soon as people realise there's no there's no way of, of of you know assuaging these people, you have to you have to oppose them. You yeah. have to actually say this is wrong. You're wrong. Stop bullying women. Get the fuck away from them. You know that's all you can. If you, if more people did that, this would be over really quickly. But at the moment, it's just people just terrified of, of saying anything, you know, um, uh, you know, um, saying anything. Yes, that but, somehow but interestingly, I, which I thought, which is why I thought the D Dave Chappelle thing was interesting. Now, I, hands up, I've never really watched any Dave Chappelle comedy at all. But it was interesting that he, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't sort of go into it gently, did he? He said, I'm team yeah. turf. I yeah. mean, he he put it out there. He said, "This, I, yeah. I, this, I'm hands up. This is wrong, and I'm I am totally on the side of of the women." Which I thought, you know, that's that shows quite a lot of integrity. I thought, or oh, maybe yeah. you know, he oh, thought it would it would get him a lot of publicity, which it has. <laughs> but you know, whatever. Uh, he, at least he the, did it. He didn't do it by halves, did he? No, no. But the other the other thing to point out is that, of course. Simply because he his his you know he's not been as steeped in it I guess as we have but he he was kind of saying things like J.K. Rowling believes in gender when she really doesn't she believes in sex no not gender. I, I was yeah I was like no I was no. like this and then he also did a, a part of the routine was very unfortunate where he was talking about talking about his feelings about a man being in the toilet with him that's not the point Dave it's women. No. It's women who are forced to share spaces with yes. men. <laughs> you know? But having said that, for the most part, it was great. And he was especially powerful on the um, racism of the, that brilliant thing about, uh, what's his name, Lil Baby, the rapper, who, who killed a black guy and it didn't harm his career. But as soon as he, as soon, <laughs> look at you, look at you, we saw it. I just, we saw I just it texted in. him. I texted him saying, can you get me the ride? <laughs> <laughs> but he pointed out, but he pointed out that uh, the baby, the baby, I think his name is, killed a guy. The baby, and, he yeah. didn't, and it didn't harm his career. Killed a black guy, and it didn't harm his career. But he, but he hurt some gay man's feelings, gay white guy's feelings, and it completely, you know, 
uh, he had to apologize and all yeah. that sort of thing. You know, he is. Oh, that's he terrible. Is, he is without equal on on those kinds of disparities. You know, he is absolutely brilliant on it. And the great thing is, the wokes the wokes have a really hard time challenging him. You know, <laughs> I mean, how are you going to stand up for the guy with the with for the the boy with the dragon, the cock tattoo, and not stand up for Dave Chappelle in this one, you know? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, i got to get that right. Um, have you got so, a, somebody was asking earlier, have you got a, have you got a picture of the uh, of the tattoo? Of the tattoo? Oh, we, we'll have to link to it because as soon as I share screen, I, I reveal, you know, all my no, yes. tabs. And all sorts of tabs. I'm, yes, uh, everything right. I'm doing. They're all completely normal. Most of them are Twitter. <laughs> Most of them are me are getting angry at people on Twitter. Well, no, right. yes, we'll 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 see we'll see a Twitter handle, and you'll have to get another one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But um, but it's just uh, I don't know. It's just kind of um, uh, uh, sorry, I've lost my I've lost my my uh, yeah. Sorry, I lost you guys for a sec because I started. That's uh, right, uh, man. Um, what were we talking about? Well, we were talking about Chappelle. And, oh yeah! Uh, you know, oh, the tattoo. Oh, the tattoo. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, if you look <laughs> at my last, if you look at JL's last piece for my Substack, you'll see it. It's um, it's quite an extraordinary thing. And as someone else pointed out, you're at work. This bloke is coming in with a short sleeve, short sleeves on, and showing off this fucking tattoo of a of a of a, a woman with with breasts, a man with breasts, uh, uh, ejaculating. What are what you know? What what are the women in his writers' yes. room supposed to think about that? I, I thought they, exactly they, the same. Are they allowed to complain, for instance? You know, or will they get fired if they complain about that? It's so fucking fucked. It really is. Hmm. Um, and it goes uh, to show that this is clearly about sex. You know, when the, the first thing you do is get a tattoo of yourself in, with an erection, ejaculating. You know, or of a male so person horrible, who's it's you know, so horrible. <laughs> yeah, oh. like. I must get I must get a tattoo of myself ejaculating. I wonder how that would go down. Yeah, I, yeah, I would I would totally come on that show. But imagine, I mean, <laughs> here's Graham Linehan, writer, father Ted, with his new yeah. tattoo. You know, I don't know. Yeah. It's it's um it's a mind blowing movement sometimes, and it's mind blowing that it's come so far, and it's mind blowing that we're still fighting it after all this time. You know, it, it, it's I, what I find mind blowing is that uh, I'm still. Like I've I've been off Twitter all week. Like you know, like like I said, um, had some family issues. My husband had been in hospital all week, but now he's out and everything's all good. All Excellent. Good. Good uh, in news. fact, he just he just got me some wine. Yeah, for yeah, all yeah. Of the, for the all of the ferrying, you... all of the ferrying that I've been doing last week. <laughs> he's sick. He's sick, and you're cracking the whip. <laughs> I love it. It's all right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, so I I've I sort of I missed Twitter last week really. So yesterday I was at a little bit of a loose end. So I uh, had a bit of a pork about on Twitter, and I asked, I asked, uh, I asked a number of people whether they believed that male-born people with a penis should have the right to undress in a communal changing room where women and girls are undressing. And honest to God, it's still. I have to say, one person, one person did actually say yes. I was, I was quite astonished at this. They said yes, absolutely, and I was like, well, honestly. That's it's great that you have said this out loud. It's yeah. uh, you know it makes it a lot easier if people are totally prepared to say absolutely what they are fighting for. It makes it a lot easier for the other side because right now, you know, it, people are cloaking it under the idea of trans rights, and then they sort of you know which they can pull back and push yeah. forward. You know, they can argue it from this perspective, and then when you question them, they can pull back to here and just say. Right. But anyway, so I said, um, I, I'm, I have a lot of respect for you for saying it out loud because it makes it a lot easier to argue against. And they said, what do you mean? People argue it all the time. <laughs> I said, no, 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 no. Genuinely, I, maybe you are not aware, but people don't say this out loud. And at that point, they were like, well, I certainly don't agree with your framing of it. No, no, no. I don't agree with your <laughs> phrasing. <laughs> They obviously yeah. thought that, that this was something that people answered all the time. And when I told them that actually no, they were like, oh, well, no. Um, I don't agree with your three. feeling. And then I was blocked. <laughs> <laughs> of course. They're great. They're great. Yeah. They, well, it did, but it did make me laugh. <laughs> but I see that I see that people, I love things like um, when they reply to you. I saw one person reply to you with, uh, with um, what was it? Um, uh, they said, uh, here's a thread that breaks down Helen's question. <laughs> 
the answer so is no. If the answer is not no, then you are a red flag. It's that simple, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's yes. That or if the answer has to go over one tweet, I think you're probably trying to make excuses for why you can't answer. I mean, it's yeah. pretty obvious, isn't it? You know, you've, yeah. Twitter has now given us 280 characters. There's quite a lot yeah. in there that you can say. Um, and it's pretty much either yes or no. Or, yeah. you know, you can qualify it, but... But anyway, so it was again quite interesting yesterday. I had uh, I poked about a, poked a few harness nests with the question, and uh, it was uh, you know most people were like oh, bad faith, bad faith, or see my incredibly long thread that doesn't answer it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the main thing is like there is no other way of framing it. That's what it is. Either male-born people with a penis can go into women's spaces, according to you, or male-born people with a penis can't go into women's spaces, according to you. It's Ooh. a very simple, you know. Yeah, so the only yeah. other way of framing it is by taking a male-born person with a penis and trying somehow to gaslight yourself into thinking that's not a male-born person with a penis anymore, which is really what they're doing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you see, um, <laughs> uh, you kind of reminded me of something, did you see that uh, very powerful piece about the effect of the um, cotton ceiling on one, on one young woman uh, where she was talking about the pressure she comes under to accept males into her dating pool and all this sort of thing, uh, how how gay spaces have been completely invaded by straight men with blue hair, uh, you know, straight women with, with blue hair as well, and how it's just, you know, gay people are being forced into a smaller and smaller corner, forced to defend themselves constantly. It was really, really interesting. Has no one read it? it no. By, it, it was written by Pseudonymous, which I presume is a name <laughs> that a lot of people share. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's really powerful. Uh, maybe we can put that in the links as well. Um, yeah, I was just having a chat. I have a, I have a good friend, a gay man who I was chatting with yesterday, and he was saying the same thing. He's one of the few gay men who's still my friend who knows about my sort of I'm activities. Sorry to hear that. But he's a wonderful man, and he was saying, you know, he brought it up with me, and he's like, you know, I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of everywhere I go. There are straight men looking for cross dressers all over the gay male dating apps, and then there are straight women claiming to be gay men and it's like you know yeah. it's just everywhere he's like well, i can't get laid everybody just wants me to put on a dress <laughs> yeah and and not only that but the people on these apps uh the the people on these apps get thrown off the apps i know there's a guy who was thrown off uh grinder was it dennis That's kavanaugh right. i can't remember who. no it was. it wasn't dennis kavanaugh i was i forget who uh, but yeah you can you can literally i mean you can say Whatever your preferences are, bottom only, top only, no one under 30, no one over 30. You can yeah. even make like racial distinctions that you won't sleep with people with certain skin colors and things like that. Really? Yes, yeah, they're not going to bother you with that. Sure, go ahead. That's just your yeah. preferences. But if you say, I don't have sex with females, out. This is on a gay male app, you know? That's just extraordinary. The, you know, <laughs> I mean, this, this is what happens when you poison a system with its opposite. Like basically the the oh, yeah, gay... it was edible tom something yeah go on sorry yeah, edible tom gay the gay movement is like uh, been invaded by straight people and they have poisoned it they have poisoned it it's not the gay when when you see these polls saying that the LGBT movement is as is, is less popular than it ever was before it's not the LGBT movement it's straight people straight <laughs> people have poisoned the movement you know they've mm -hmm. they've they've been injected into it like a like a really bad uh, form of flu and they are making everybody sick <laughs> you know <laughs> it is it's a it's becoming a sickened uh activism or a sickened civil rights uh thing because it, it contains people who are the very opposite to what it's supposed to be fighting for. It yeah, is, and yeah. This, this it's goes, like black civil rights being invaded by racists. It's yeah, not right. This you know? goes directly to what, a, a great point that Ophelia Benson makes all the time is that there's this new, there's constant rhetoric about how, you know, inclusivity is so important, but that's nonsense. Activism, rights, is all about exclusivity. It's all about saying we are a group that is fighting for our rights. Women don't have to be inclusive of any other uh, civil rights movement to fight for women's rights. And gay people don't have to be inclusive of straight people for our rights and for our spaces. So this idea that inclusivity is always good is just such a silly, unthinking way of framing it because <clears throat> yeah. exclusive might sound like a bad word, but it isn't, you know? It means yeah. spaces for it, it, your people, you know? I, I, yeah. I agree. And the same thing um, in, in terms of well, in a way, the same thing with with marginalised. I mean, it's not it's not the same, but it's been <clears throat> co-opted. So if you call something marginalised, then you yes. can just say we should go to the front of the queue. We mm, should yes. we should have precedence over this group of people because we're marginalised. 
yes, um, yes. I mean, so it's, 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 it's being co-opted, hasn't it? You know, there yeah, are yeah. truly yeah. marginalised group. And then there's, as we were saying earlier, or as I was saying earlier, there's a group of people which is all self-defined. People can opt into it as they want. And then they can say, but now I'm marginalised, so you should give me what you want. Yeah. I mean, this is, this, this this is, was, this was, like narcissist. This is narcissistic kids. One of the earlier uh, hills that I died on was uh, was literally being misused. I thought, <laughs> like, of all the words that you can't misuse, it's literally. Literally <laughs> means literally. It literally means literally. <laughs> and if you start misusing literally, everything else falls apart. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So now, <laughs> get it down, you Helen. But like, but like, you know. If okay, you, it's dummy. <laughs> So for me, for me, the word literally was like the scout, the scout that ran ahead, saw the lay of the land and got shot, you know, and 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 it came back bleeding and wounded and not really itself anymore. And everything is followed uh, after that. Marginalized means white. Oh, yes, you're right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It uses white yeah. and male. White. Yeah. Yeah. White, white and male. And you know, it, it's it's it, once we. That's why our language is so important, and that's another reason why. No, I'm you're right. It, it all it all went with literally, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the words that have to do with reality. This has always been a war on reality, so it's not mm. a surprise that words like literally and actually, you know, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, the, I mean, the I, war against reality, and that's yeah, just yeah. a lot of these these men and women too who want to be men but can't be because you can't literally change sex. They're they're never going to be happy because they're, it's never going to happen. You know, like there's always going to be something triggering a, a, that sense of dysphoria or that sense that maybe isn't even dysphoria, but it's more like resentment, you know? Stella O'Malley wrote something very interesting that I put on the site a while ago. She said that um, uh, she works with a lot of detransitioners and a mm. lot of the, a lot of the, the word they use a lot is exhausted. They mm. were exhausted mm. because, because these kids are, uh, crestfallen when they don't pass and they are kind of trying to be manly trying to act like men you know and there's there's no real fucking what they don't understand is there's no agreement on what a man is like or what a woman is like no one you know they, they they've they've their their personality is being is being put through this ringer you know and coming out kind of stunted and shy and nervous of themselves mm. and after a while mm. the, the sheer effort it takes to to maintain that it just it, it, it they they can't do it and they detransition you know yeah so, that's so I, sad that's so sad and that's the mirror image of male to female transgenderism or transsexualism or transism because it's usually the opposite it's like this excitement to role play as something some of the time instead yeah. of this like desperation to get away from something yeah. you know yeah, yeah yeah that's very true and it's another yeah. reason why this whole deal it, it, it really is a terrible deal for women and a great deal for men yeah. like our yeah. like our like the showrunner on dear white people dear <laughs> yes. white people why is it white male showrunner running dear white people what <laughs> is funny. going on i i see in the comments people um picking up on that that amazing phrase that somebody used i i saw um on it was babel fish cakes's thread where somebody had said don't fact shame me because <laughs> they, because she said well have you got have you got any evidence for this or she'd said you know well this is this and they were like don't fact shame me wow. and they used it and it wasn't an ironic and uh, if it was a, if it was ironic then you know I fair play to you. them they did really well but they said it don't fact shame me yeah. and you, you think this is this is truly now in the twilight zone isn't it where you you say i'm going to lie or i'm going to make up things and don't you dare question it in fact if you do question it, i'm going to say oh, you're fact shaming me <laughs> we have nothing if we can, if we don't have language we have yeah. nothing and i still have i mean what i what i've never been able to understand is is all my colleagues and friends and and you know the people i've lost through all this you know they think they think that it's possible to exist in this world and it's not it's not it may be just temporarily while it's still kind of you know unknown people having their lives ruined but, yes. but eventually none of us will be able to exist in this world without yeah. having I, to make i agree you know so mm -hmm. i just I agree i can i i can i i take that forward a little bit mm. i i did uh, i was on a panel for um uh, merched Khamri um last saturday 
which was which was really good. It was it was so well done. They had some oh, brilliant good, speakers, yes. brilliant speakers, um, and I, I I only had to talk for for five minutes. But 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 part of what I had been thinking about beforehand is that you know you've got you've got the right with Trump um, sort of leading the charge into a sort of post truth world where you can say whatever you want and when somebody picks you up on it you 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 don't have to provide evidence you just brazen it out and as we've said before and there seems to be no comeback on this but the left instead of pushing back against it to prevent this from happening as we should be doing they've sort of embraced it yeah but because yeah. it's by, by saying you know but if it's um you know if it works for us if it's expedient for our argument we'll do the same but oh. but genuinely we're 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 walking into a post truth society and that's genuinely terrifying for yeah. me yeah. um and as it should be for everyone and i'm certain it is when you when you really think about it when you're in a society where i mean i, I know we've overused the word orwellian but that is literally it <laughs> yeah yeah no it is it's, it's <laughs> like there's a there's a sequence in there's a moment in in 1984 where a um where a, a, a friend who works at the Ministry of Language or something of uh, Winston, he meets him for lunch and he talks about how, how powerful it is as a, as a weapon of um, control to take away people's language. You know, once you start, once words start meaning, you know, once peace means slave, war and slavery means freedom, you know, then you can you can kind of limit people's ability to think about things, yes. right, to yeah. talk about things. Yeah. And we are really heading towards that kind of world. And these mm -hmm. kids are are like that already, because one thing you'll notice, and I know you, you you've come across this, is there's certain people and they simply shut down when you speak to them about this. They cannot engage with it on any level. You know, mm -hmm. because they don't have the language to fight it anymore. Because yeah. they, because words now mean their opposite. You know, mm -hmm. and and we really really have to. You know, it, it's it's a last stand in a way. You know, because well, it, it is because it starts here, but this is just this is. I mean, this is why I feel that the left is walking into this because it's expedient for what they want at this point. Once we allow this to happen. Uh, then it's going to happen, you know, the Overton window will have moved and it's so difficult to move it back again. Yeah. We'll be in a post truth society and then, like, anything goes. People yeah. can argue it's like, anything, say anything, and yeah. it's you, it, impossible to oppose. It's like division That's by zero. Terrifying. Once you have a mathematical formula and there's a division by zero somewhere in it, you can create any solution you want. The formula loses its ability to be either correct or incorrect. Once you take away this, it's impossible to divide anything by zero. Okay. So once you say, once you have a division by zero in your formula, that means you have to throw the whole formula out or you get gibberish out of it. And yeah. once we start breaking with reality, it's like we're doing that. We're injecting a nonsense into this, the matrix of how the world works. And once there's one nonsense in there, it's like a universal acid that can just slowly spread and create unreality all over the place. And this is a really scary time because we're having a hard time clinging on to reality because reality is becoming more and more abstract every day because we do everything virtually now, you know? Mm. Yes. Mm. Like, I give you an yeah. example. Uh, actions that we take routinely on the internet, <clears throat> icons, they're usually the image to represent something is based on something in the real world. Like if you want to make a phone call, it's a picture of a telephone receiver. Mm. But all of those images are based on back in the when we had tangible objects to represent things. And now we have new actions that we take all the time that don't even have a tangible object to represent them in an icon format. So we, you know, That's like, so true. Wow. You know, yeah. like there's an envelope for mail, but envelopes don't won't exist soon. There's a telephone for a phone call. You know, there's signs. Like everything is based on objects in the real world. But as things get more and more abstract, we don't even have that anymore. We're just going to have zany symbols for things. You know. And I um, think maybe it's that alienation that's kind of finding its way into some of these kids who. Oh, that's a really people. good point, Artie. You know, yeah, it's, it's really, just yeah. so hard. Reality is just something that we're losing touch with so quickly. We need to hold on to it more than ever right yeah. now. Yeah. Well, I have to say, this is the way I do it by talking with you guys. So thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for doing it again. What's is there anything to look forward to this week before we head off um, that we can tell people about? Any protests or anything coming up? Yeah, what is hmm. coming up this week? It's, it's, uh, I don't, uh, yeah, no, the only thing is I'm doing the LGB Alliance conference on the 21st. So, uh, that's please, exciting. 
please come along if you're uh, if you've got nothing else to do that night. And if you're coming to Dave Chappelle the night before, uh, uh, say hello um, because uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm so excited. I've never been more excited. It's like seeing it's like seeing Ali fight or something. Or something you know? <laughs> I just get I get goosebumps just thinking about it. Um, uh, and that's this. You said the twenty. That's this month. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. He just I just happened to find the tickets. Usually I miss those things by a week. And this time <laughs> I just happened to go online and there were a couple of tickets available. So it's brilliant. Wow. It's on, uh, where is it? It's on at the, oh, the LGB Alliance thing, uh, Queen Elizabeth Hall, I think. And the uh, other gig, uh, the Chappelle gig, I can't remember the name of it. Sorry, I can't remember the name of where it's on. But um, but listen, 50 minutes is a good one, so let's leave it at that, uh, unless um, Helen is... Uh, uh, I know you just refilled, Helen, so you might want to go I've, a bit longer. That's it. Well, I've got to go. I've got to go cook some... I've got, I've got, a, bit of, I've got a bit of bass playing now, and then I've got to go and cook Sunday dinner. Oh, great. So, nice. can, we see a bit of bass, can we see a bit of bass playing, or do you need to build up to that? <laughs> go um, on. Chris, Christmas time. We'll do it around Christmas time. Maybe right. I need fair to build enough. up a bit. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. That's a, we'll we'll hold you to that though. Um, thanks very much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, a lovely little uh, fifty minute one there. Um, always a pleasure. I will. Yes, see you absolute, absolute pleasure. We'll see you all see next you week. Bye bye. Bye.